<laughs> I'm with Nick Nocturnal, episode five of Don't You Fret. We're here. Hello. How are you, dude? I'm good, man. I'm good. Just, uh, just keeping busy and making a meme of myself on the internet, man. How about you? <laughs> I don't think that's necessarily true. I don't think you're you're an entire. I don't think you're entirely a meme. Is what I was. That's the nicest thing anyone has ever said about me. Thank you. <laughs> well, you know, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I guess I discovered you through. I think someone shot me a link because uh, you've mentioned Era Riffs a couple times through like your videos. Oh, yeah, dude. You play them, riffs. and you can play them, <laughs> and they sound good. And you're a guitar player in my eyes for sure. Oh, thank you, man. Yeah, that dude, those fucking riffs, man. It's like every time you guys release something new, and I'm like, I'm just going to react. I'm not even going to attempt this right now. Like, I don't want to spend the next, like, day and a half trying to get this down because it's just so much work. Bro, don't feel bad. Yeah. It takes me, like, a month to learn one song, too. Like, <laughs> like I'm, I'm right there with you. Well, we've, yeah. we've got a, a lot of new faces on the stream today. Nick has a bit of a following on YouTube and uh, Twitch now. He's growing. Uh, we love to see him on Twitch. Um, just oh, yeah. real fast down below the chat. There's two links you guys can click. Those are our sponsors. Oh shit. Yeah, dude. One is the coffee shop that I am employed at. So you can use, <laughs> yeah, you can use don't you fret to get uh 25% off your coffee subscription and free shipping. And right below that is guitar pedals, swindler effects. You can also use don't you fret and get 10% off all orders. That's sick. Yeah, dude. Do it up. So, uh, yeah, man, um, it's, this is actually going to be kind of fun for me because I don't know the world of YouTube. Okay. Um, gotcha. It seems like a complicated world. It seems like most people who are involved with YouTube hate that they're involved with YouTube, <laughs> if that makes sense. I see exactly what you mean. Okay. Yeah. That, yeah. Um, um, yes, yeah, sir. Go ahead. How did you get into that? So YouTube, man, honestly, I, it stemmed obviously from just being a musician since I was younger, like a guitarist mainly. And I would just, when I was younger, I, I just would use YouTube a lot. Like I would see dudes like, I don't know if you remember like Killer Buckeye. He's like kind of the OG guitar cover guy. Okay. Um, his, his name was Finn too, someone else who was kind of like Killer Buckeye. And then there was a lot of instrumental gent artists like Sithue, Intervals, um shades of black that guy gets super swept under the radar but that guy's super talented he just doesn't do much anymore I remember those. yeah yeah so all those guys and okay yeah. you remember when ryan from polaris was the young youtube yes i did <laughs> I, dude. I it actually took me like a long time to connect the dots like we like we yeah. met those guys in australia and i was like man that guy looks mm -hmm. really familiar mm -hmm. come to find out i was watching him when he was like it w looked to be like eight years old on youtube yeah dude shredding He's like so periphery young. songs and like dude he, he was killing it and like i i discovered him a little later in my youtube journey i was like who the who is this dude and i was like yeah i was just like shocked i was like oh my guitar covers suck ass this guy actually knows <laughs> how to play yeah he shreds but, uh, for sure dude yeah and his band's his band's sick but essentially yeah like i just watched those guys like the guitar cover guys and the original guys and well, I wrote originals that were terrible, but I still wrote something. I was like, well, okay. Like, I'm sick of trying to throw them on SoundCloud and like having one view. Let's go on YouTube and have two views instead, essentially. And that was really the main goal to go on YouTube was to just share original stuff. And like, I could put video with it. And then oh, so you, also you like, just use YouTube yeah. to basically like MySpace to use for. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Exactly. And I was, well, cause I also watched the cover guys. I, slowly also got inspired right. to be like okay well like i like what they're doing like let's try that too so i would do guitar covers i like wouldn't show my face for the first few because i didn't want to like someone to kidnap me or some shit because i was like a young kid <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. like you know what i mean like that like weird ass fear and like it, they were just awful and um but i still did it and it, of course i had to be awful before i could learn to be okay at my level nowadays um but yeah it, it, that was essentially just inspired by those guys and I just kept doing it and as i did the covers more i noticed people like that and obviously it would get more views than the originals because you type in you know a name of a song in youtube and you see the cover 10 pages later but you type in my name like who's going to type in nick nocturnal it's just not going to happen through like the algorithm uh, i get kinda. what you're saying yes yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but if someone types in like i don't know era right and i do an era cover even though no way in hell i was doing that when i was that young but like yeah, then yeah. even on the 10th page you'll at least see i understand me. what you're right. saying yeah 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 so, so okay. you were you were thinking I about algorithms like in the early days huh 
Kind of, yeah. So I banked on that, and it was just fun to do. Like, I, when I was younger, I would always, like, not cover songs, because that's, like, filming it, but I would always learn songs. Like, right. I love doing As that. guitar just players, like, we just learn other people's crap. Yeah. Exactly. So I just loved doing that anyways. And I just kept doing it more and more, and then the thing that really prompted, prompted it to, like, really engage me and for me to kind of start my YouTube journey was I covered, I think it was after the burial, Lost in the Static, when that came out. And I covered it really fast. And that was the first song that was like a new song I covered like fast. And I didn't know that was fast. I did it the same day. I was just like, hey, guys, here's my guitar cover. And that shit like exploded for me in terms of views. And I was like, really? So why? that was like your start? Yeah. Kind wow, of, that was like so, my real life. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Like your viral push, I guess. The best <laughs> yeah. way to. Okay. So that album came out what? I don't know. I guess it's old now. It feels new to me still. How funny is that? Mm-hmm. Lost yeah, in the Static. I feel like- 2016 i want to wow. say maybe yeah it's probably maybe right. around there yeah, or maybe 17 i don't know it was, it was a while ago that's when we started like, touring with those guys so it's like still okay. fresh with me i guess i do love that album that album fucking kicks ass dude that album's awesome but yeah essentially i would i was doing like guitar covers here and there but like not super seriously or like not caring and then as soon as that happened and i kept noticing people like dude how'd you do this so fast how'd you do this so fast and i was like i just I just did it normally. What do you mean? Because I didn't have any really guitarist to compare that speed to, even though that's something I was doing for like ever by myself. So I was like, okay, I'm going to try to do this again. So another song came out by a different band. I did it. Same thing. I was like, something special is here. <laughs> I figured it out. But yeah, it's yeah. something special is here. And that's really the start of me wanting to be the fast kind of cover guy okay that's where i guess nick nocturnal as you could say really started with that which so, yeah. one knocked you on your ass oh so many dude really yeah um i can't really think of the earlier ones i mean i just did them poorly though that's the thing in the early days like i have much higher standards now like right cover, yeah but like even the lost in the static cover i didn't do that properly like i was covering songs that were made in standard type tuning like a d standard and i was just doing drop d like things like that. Okay, um, I get what you're saying. I had I had a Schecter with a Floyd Rose. So in, instead of changing tunings, I literally put a capo on like the second fret. If I <laughs> and I so I'd be in like drop A sharp, and if I needed to play in drop D, I would put a capo on like the fourth fret or fifth fret, whatever. It is. All right, that works. I would do shit like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that doesn't drive me insane at all. No, not at yeah, all. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad your standards have rised. I guess. A little bit here and there, just no capo. That's really it. Everything else, <laughs> everything's the same. <laughs> just no capo. Everything's That's amazing. Well, yeah, you have a bit of an artillery of guitars now too, right? Yeah, I got very lucky because I just, I just only had those two guitars forever. Like the six string Schecter and then the seven string Schecter came later. Because like I'm not a dude who likes to buy a lot of shit. It's just like I have what I have. And right. It works. That's how I am. Yeah. Like, I'm so done with it because it's like if there's something sitting there that I'm not using, I get like anxious and I'm like, I'm not using this. I'm not yeah, and you feel just... bad, like you like as a lover of guitar, you like want it to be played. Yeah. yeah, I get that. Exactly. So the other guitar I got after the seven string was, I think, literally just the Schecter endorsement one. Or not the Schecter. Oh God, and Ernie Ball endorsement ones. That was it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, since then, though, like it was just the two Schecters for literally ever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome, Ernie Ball. I was just talking to Nick from Night Versus last week, and he praised oh, about Ernie Ball and. They're shredded guitars, thin necks. They make you play better, that kind of thing. Dude, they're, yeah, like I am much shittier of a player. The Ernie Balls really are what make it. So That's I how I am with Ivanez. Them. They got nice thin necks. They make me play better. <laughs> exactly. uh, I will say, too, you're like the only other dude I know that sticks with mostly black guitars like me. Like, Dude, yes. Like, that's it. Matte black guitars. I'm done with it. If it's not matte black, I'm sorry, dude. Yeah, it's get just... out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> not well, okay. Money. For me, they're easy to clean and they, they, yeah. Like, I have one gloss finish guitar, that guy, and like, mm-hmm. it, there's no point in keeping fingerprints off of it. It's actually like gives me anxiety. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but everyone gives me shit because I have the most boring, like, you, can, you can't even see them in the, on the wall. It's funny. It's like they're just. <laughs> I can, dude they're sick though yeah that's i like i like black guitars too and that's it i've only really had <laughs> other than my six string Schecter, just like black guitars it's like i like how they look bro like what do you want <laughs> they're cool me? they're metal and that's it they're, too yeah, like they're they're metal, they're metal. yeah, yeah. 
No, but those days are over, right? Like the whole like actually being metal. Like nowadays, you're you just hip and cool to be metal band. I think, dude. Yeah, I mean the shit that's on the internet too. Like, I mean, I'm the least metal metal dude probably out there. <laughs> I have like one tattoo that is barely there. I, I've like, met some pretty me. unmetal dudes in my life yeah. of touring. I'll mm-hmm. say that. Yeah, I love that though because it's like metal is more within. Dude, it's funny you say that because the yeah. first time I came to your Twitch channel, you had done the mm-hmm. deathcore tattoos. Oh, okay. and I had oh. no idea. <laughs> first time I was like, me. "Damn, tat it up," because <laughs> they looked great on stream. Out of any of the times yeah. you could have watched my stream, the one time you come when I have all the death and I think the first thing I so said, fun. "Oh God, what did I say?" I'd like someone pointed out that they were fake. I was like, ah, it's probably better. Tattoos fucking hurt and they suck to look at anyway. It's like, it was so fun. That was literally the first time I came into the stream. It's And then next time you come by, you're like, dude, what happened? Like, Damn, that must have been a lot of laser removal. No, was, <laughs> that's actually really funny. That's so- um, well, talking about the younger years of Nick Nocturnal mm-hmm. as a YouTuber, as a guitar player, what bands like inspired you to either cover their music or get into guitar playing? Mm-hmm. General? Well, uh, I grew up, it, it was kind of, this is like my lineage, I guess, of like guitar inspiration. Started with punk, so Blink, Rancid, No Effects. That was kind of before I was getting into guitar and then like Green Day in there. And then it was classic rock. So Guns N' Roses, Led Zeppelin, and I guess also classic metal. So a little bit of Metallica, a little bit of Iron Maiden here and there as well. Yeah. But it was really Guitar Hero that like, Oh. made me a guitarist yeah. okay yeah and i just I discovered a lot of those bands through my through my cousin but also like a lot of the more classic rock bands and stuff through guitar hero and i kept playing that and i was like okay i want to be like a real guitarist because this is fun as shit and then the first like metal band was as i lay dying yeah through struggle that song i listened to it and i was like i need this and only this forever yeah and i couldn't look back after i heard something like that like straight (laughs) metalcore just fucking yeah exactly mine was like abr that's like the big you know yeah it's It's funny thinking about how much guitar hero probably even non-metal lovers probably Mm -hmm. got introduced to like metal songs and learned to love them in a way from that Mm -hmm. video game which is crazy Dude, so yeah, so many guitarists I meet, they're like, dude, yeah, like guitar hero. Like they just know it was such a staple, but it's so weird at the time. Like, I don't know, at least for me, like it it was obviously a popular game, but it didn't feel like this like evolutionary, like bringing a bunch of guitarists to be guitarists. Yeah, fruition, yeah. So this is actually crazy. Uh, I guess Rocksmith or whatever, mm-hmm. that band where you like, or that game where you actually like play the like the yeah. real guitar in order to play it or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of my homies in the Discord actually taught him guitar lessons, which opened my eyes to how insane it was. He learned yeah. guitar through Rocksmith. Yeah. And he shreds. Like, dude. Like, I taught him a guitar lesson and I've, like, threw my most advanced warm ups, techniques, all that stuff. And he's like, You mean like this? And I was just like, <laughs> What the fuck? Like, how did you learn guitar? And he's like, From a video game. So I was like, We're all doing it wrong. Dude, a rocksmith is, is just overpowered. Like that just it's came out. It's OP as fuck. It's OP as fuck, dude. Like I'm not even joking. Like I didn't I didn't believe it existed actually until like I saw people on Twitch playing it and streaming it. And I was like, what is this? Because yeah. you know, like I knew Guitar Hero grew up with that. And the people are like, no, you actually play guitar and you learn stuff. I'm like, you're doing a joke on me or something. Like, <laughs> you're doing you know a laugh. I mean? like, yeah. Doing a laugh, dude. This isn't real. And then I saw a dude playing it and I was like, this is insane. This is amazing. Yeah. And then they're telling me it's like it came out in 2013. I'm like, where have I been for the last like seven years, dude? Yeah, like, true, man. I, I I never paid attention to it. And not until Twitch, like just glancing through like the music area yeah, and yeah. all that stuff. Twitch is like a whole new social media platform for me and I'm enjoying it a lot. Um, it is so fun. It's fun. That's my best thing. Like just the community. You know, like I've been doing YouTube for so many goddamn years and it's like, it's just the simple thing of video, post, look at comments. Oh, I hate you, Nick. Go die. Thanks for the video, Nick. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, it's like, it's, yeah. it's not real time or anything. You just go through them. But it's like Twitch, real time. You talk to everybody. They're right there. Hopefully the it YouTube feels- community of toxicity doesn't come into the, the live stream of Twitch. Because <laughs> YouTube oh. comments hurt more than anything else on earth, I think. <laughs> It's more than, yeah. I mean, over the years, like I don't care anymore. Like I, I find them funny when I get hate comments. I've just dealt with so many over the years that I, 
could not care there's less, an immunity like, for sure but i i can't like yeah. even with Snowblood, we just released it i'm like where's the asshole <laughs> like i'm scrolling i'm like what's yeah. he gonna say dude <laughs> Yeah, I mean, as as bands, that's a perspective I don't know, actually, as bands having to deal with, like, actually people making videos on you guys that are, like, mean videos. It's so much worse, dude, because <laughs> cause you're putting something so polished and so worked. Like, an album, we've spent, like, a year writing, probably right, more right. recording heart and soul. We're living out of a mm -hmm. van most of our lives. Right, and then right. some kid on YouTube's like, fucking suck, the old vocalist is better. And it's like, <laughs> sick, dude yeah even when i do reaction videos and like the thing with my thing is like i, I feel like i've matured a lot with doing them like even before i wasn't ever like a, a dick to anybody about them but i was always like like constructive i'm always like i don't like this maybe because of this but i like these things you know like instead of just saying like yeah, this yeah. Is shit. but even when i do stuff like man i love this part but maybe if it was a little like this even comments like that i know are like that band is gonna be like dude it's already out like yeah <laughs> yeah oh wait let me go back to the studio real quick <laughs> yeah let me go back to the fucking free pro one second dude like, yeah it's coming out tomorrow no so, but yeah, at I the same time like i don't know that shit does work like hmm. this upcoming album is a little heavier for us and probably because everyone that ever listened to us was like i want it heavy again <laughs> you know it's it kind of guess that you listen to people it works yeah sometimes you just give the people what they want and you're like fuck it like here take it and then it's like oh that okay that worked out well so, like not too bad people seem to fucking dig that shit so yeah i understand that uh it's funny though as long as the youtube mm -hmm. haters stay on youtube and the lovely people move to twitch you know the lovely the lovely there's definitely i think with twitch it's more you have control a bit over the community right like, if you're a yeah, yeah, yeah. person you're going to have toxic people in your chat. But if you're just like a pretty chill person, like most of the time, there's not a lot of just people who are Have you seen that dude that's like gone viral for being the most wholesome Twitch streamer? Have you seen that dude? Maybe. I name maybe or if I uh, saw a picture of him probably. I don't it's know like Brox or it's like B-R-O-X. Basically, like someone came in and donated a bunch of money and he's like, no, it's okay. Don't do that. Take the money back. <laughs> and then he like blew up. Like he, like people were like, this guy doesn't want our money. We're gonna give him more. Like it was just like, yeah, yeah. sick, that's sick so guy. Funny. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah, it, people are really nice. Yeah, but there are definitely like some toxic communities. You can tell if you go in there. That's because the t streamers being a dick all the time, and it's like, well, yeah, that's what people see every day. They know it's acceptable, and then they're dick to others. And yeah, I, I love my community. I know some of them are in here. Love you guys because they're just. I mean, I try to be super chill. Like. I'm my, my I have one simple rule. You can even kind of be a dick to me, but like just don't be a dick to each right, other. Right. Yeah. Like, that's that's kind of how I am cool. too. Yeah. People definitely come yeah. in and light me up for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so um, I know that. I know that. <laughs> so you, you have uh, your own material, music, and mm -hmm. do, do you have a band that you play with or. Yeah. So my own material, like the Nick Nocturnal stuff, that it's so funny when people are like, Nick, wait, you write music? Like, and like six years later, like, yeah, my first literally video was my own shit <laughs> right but, yeah. Um, but uh yeah like i that's just me that's nick nocturnal i okay. do everything i the guitars i record and i program bass drums and all that shit yeah, yeah. And if i want vocals like see if i can get one of my buddies who are vocalists that i worked with over the years and then i also have an actual band that is if you call it a band it's me and andy sizik you might know him the vocalist of monuments now andy. oh the the new guy yeah, the new guy. Okay, well, he rips. I don't know him personally. Okay. I toured okay, with yeah, Monuments he... with the Chris Barreto days. Oh, Chris Barreto. Okay, yeah. So he's the he's the new dude. But yeah, he he fucking he's insane. And I've worked with him for a long time now. And yeah, so it's just me and him in this project. I essentially am the instrumentalist. Right. He's the vocalist, and we come together trying to just make cool, heavy, modern. It's metalcore. I mean, who are we kidding? Just modern metalcore stuff. That's just heavy. Yeah. So yeah that's also awesome. the two projects have you guys ever played a show no man and it's like well i mean the time we, yeah this year it's now, not like, gonna happen this, yeah, this year it's definitely hey dude like i know like we didn't do this before but now that the world's fucked, <laughs> yeah yeah you're gonna going. be the first pandemic touring band yeah dude r.i.p um, i guess i guess be. prior to the pandemic i was wondering if you guys played shows or hmm. No, it, it's always been like, well, first, there's just two of us. And yeah, we can get session musicians. And if we ever play live one day, we'd do that. But it's like, I'm a YouTuber full time, man. I don't even like being away from home. It's, you know, I like being at home and controlling it and doing what I have to do. And Andy's in like seven fucking bands or however many, like he's a busy, busy boy, you know? So it's like, 
we're both super chill. We don't want to tour. If one day for some reason we release, you know, the next album we're working on and it like pops the shit off and people are like, yeah, man, you never know. Yeah. Then like, we'll think about it, but it's (laughs) going to be sessions, you know, session musicians. Cause I mean, especially now in this climate, it's like, I'm just, we we are just worried about us, each other, not getting canceled. We don't need like three other members to worry about to not get canceled and to ruin Termina. You know what I mean? So it's like, that's a, that's a, uh, that's something I haven't even talked about on this podcast. That's just like <laughs> the idea of a band member getting canceled and dragging like possibly up to like five other human beings careers into the toilet is yep. such a cancel core, dude. It's a new genre. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of bands. Are it's in just, there, it's too, it's scary. Dude. So many good bands lost to the cancel. Yeah. It's just one dude who's just a fucking idiot. And then everyone else is screwed. And it's like, all right, thanks for the 10 years. Yeah. Like, well, and like, do? I think the, it's more of the fact that like, there doesn't even need to be like a, a very tangible, real, like the whole thing about someone coming out on like Twitter and not having any evidence, mm-hmm. but it's like someone's label yeah. dropping them anyway. Like that's fucked yeah there's no exactly. there's no arrest there's no actual case mm. just a tweet that that that's no, the yeah. shit that scares the actual fuck out of me yeah because i mean that's that's it's a double-edged sword right there are people that are actually terrible and yeah those hey you know get called out but then it's there's some people that aren't that who knows maybe just someone just fucking hates them and then they get called out once and then their 10-year career is over and it's yeah. just like what you know it's just it's just over what can you do so, <sighs> it's a weird climate man to be in a band luckily i'm just a memer on the internet, so. <laughs> well <laughs> yeah <laughs> these days it seems like almost like i might rather be a memer than like an actual heart and soul musician dude trust me it's fun <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll i'll move to that direction for sure okay i got you yeah um, well, writing your, what was the band called one more time? Termina? Is that what it is? Termina. Yeah. Termina. Okay. Um, do you ever write that stuff? Like, does it ever come from one of your YouTube videos or like your Twitch streams and then you move it? Or is there like, is that like your baby that you like? It, I try to be professional with it okay. as much as I can, as I am a YouTuber. Um, so I try to like, that's like my like actual, actual musician yeah. outlet, <laughs> just like my solo stuff. Kind of like I take that stuff a lot more seriously in a way, even though like, of course I take my career seriously, but like in a fun, like relaxed joke way. Well, like that, I mean, I get what you're saying. Like your YouTube career yeah. is a form and an outlet where you don't have to take yourself so seriously. Yeah. Yeah. And exactly. that's something that I envy being a band member. Cause like it's, it's even stuff I envy some bands, like some pop punk yeah. bands or like even yeah. some metal bands, they just don't take themselves so seriously. And it's like, man, I wish I could do that. But we like kind of have fun. to yeah especially if you're in a band and you like you your actions represent right, everyone yeah, else yeah. represents your label too, your yeah. management and all that so it's like as much as you want to have some fun on the internet sometimes you're like fuck <laughs> i know that feeling yeah. it's like ah what if this person sees it they're probably not the label's probably not going to be happy about this joke you know what i mean and it's like yeah dude going through that is like shit i can't even <laughs> imagine <laughs> um well, take music out of your life completely. What do you think you'd okay. be doing right now? Oh, shit, dude. You ever had to think about <laughs> um, that? Uh, I mean, I love, the, I love the aspects of business, actually. And, like, so you, does music include being, a, like, an entertainer, like, music, like YouTuber in general? I think general, so, yeah. Or... I'm going to make you think outside oh, the box. Okay, you're going to yeah. really make me think, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because my second answer would be I'd pretend to be a pro gamer and like try to do that because okay. I know like the grunt. Even though I'm bad at games, it's still the entertainment. Oh, route, dude, you, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you can be um, bad at games to be an entertainer. Do you remember the uh, the rage quit videos, like the Rooster Teeth? Oh, dude, I love that. Especially like I grew up with the internet era of like the dumbest shit, like funny junk and like stick page. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, stuff, I do but, like, remember the those weird stuff, websites. Actually. Like when YouTube was like not about money at all you didn't even know you could make money on youtube it was just idiots being idiots and it was the best thing in the world and like i love seeing things like that the rage quit compilations and like yeah i would love to be a part of that <laughs> definitely <laughs> well um, you're i, I, I think grew- moving to twitch is the right move i noticed you were playing uh 
some spooky game right before we yeah. started this. That was nice to, yeah. nice to see. Yeah, I love, I mean, like, I grew up a gamer just as much as I grew up a musician. It's just, like, I never showcased that side on YouTube because it just, it doesn't make sense. Like, and there's already, like, YouTubers that are metal dudes who play video game music and stuff. And they're going to do it a million times better than me. So I'm, like, I'm going to play to my strengths, you know? So I'm, like, cool with that. that. But, um, yes, that would be cool, like, if, if I could still be an entertainer in some case. If not, dude, and I had to just pick, like, a real job, dude? Oh, fuck. I mean, something <laughs> in marketing. Okay. Probably, yeah, yeah, business. yeah. I like, get you. Yeah, I, I really love business. I love entrepreneurship in general. Okay. So just, and so I like psychology of humans and how they interact with marketing and how that all works. So something in that field. Right. Like to, to, to do that. something as small as like make an advertisement, you're really getting into someone's like psyche. Yes. But at exactly. the same time, you have to appeal to the mass psyche. Like you have to, mm -hmm. statistically, I want as many people with the same mentality do it's it's a weird yeah I, and i've actually explored that with like have like if i do sponsored videos on my youtube channel even though that's linked directly to like music and my youtube it's still like a completely different mindset like i remember when i got my first sponsored deal i'm like what am i supposed to do just sit there and they pay me like it's it's just a weird thing like you have to understand how to actually market, write literally like whether it be a script or a sketch that outlines all of their selling points that they want to kind of touch on, but still be authentic and not just bullshit like reading, you know, a page from like the, right. This well, is the and feature. like yeah, no one yeah. cares about that shit either. Like, when exactly. You're, when you're like a manuscript, someone's like, uh, I mean, it's as easy as taking that little button at the bottom of the screen and dragging it through the uh, the bullshit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Which I've done that plenty of times. You know? Yeah. Like, yeah doing ads of some sort definitely i think is another one of my kind of strengths that i've just had to build up over time due to youtube and like i just like business so i'd probably do something in that but well wow, entertainment okay. i'm cool with just uh completely embarrassing myself on the internet for as long <laughs> as i can <laughs> yeah I, I don't think you're I, I think you're killing it man like i said i oh, thank you it's weird man i guess it's like i could watch your dumbest video first but i guess i watch your cool ones and then that makes me <laughs> get like a specific perception of you in my mind like mm -hmm. i just thought you were a shredder and you just happened oh, to have shit. a youtube channel I'll take yeah that, you know dude. what i mean I'll, like I'll take it's that. all about cool. what i find first i guess it's so mm -hmm. funny right exactly that's sick <laughs> so you are a gamer i was i was actually that's always one of my questions because we are on twitch this is mm -hmm. basically the twitch social or the video game social media yeah uh what games do you love um, so I grew up with the, like, wow, like okay, all yeah. Battle Net and Blizzard games. So like, that was the thing. Like I'd go to school when I was young, hate that shit, come home and play wow all day and yeah. smell like shit and eat pizza. Like I was down <laughs> with that life. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I still am dude. Ever. Straight up. Dude. Yeah. So I never got into cool. wow when it was released. I played Diablo two though. Good. Good. You saved yeah. many like of yourself. I didn't. Like, I just spent it playing other dumb games, but <laughs> It's weird. I don't know how it missed me, but mm -hmm. yeah. And so yeah, like th those have been the long lasting games. But like single player stuff, like I, I loved Fable the series. Um, yes, dude. Red Dead was fun. The GTA's, of course, and then with the online stuff, like it was always WoW, League, CS:GO, or CS Source, whatever it was at the time. Um, a lot of like what Twitch is popular now. To be right, honest. yeah, like, all those yeah, yeah. I grew up. And Warcraft, a lot of Blizzard games, because I love Blizzard and all that shit. So I still play, though. Every new expansion of WoW, dude, your boy is AFK on the internet for like two weeks, no content. Well, now you don't have My to be, because you can do it on yep. Twitch. Yeah. That's true. They know, though. They're like, okay, Nick's, the new expansion <laughs> came out. Wow. Nick's, you stream Nick's it, AFK. but you don't talk to anybody. You're just like in a bathrobe. <laughs> just, dude. just like not exactly. reading your chat. You're just... Yeah. yeah, they know when <laughs> that comes out that okay. your boy, that's his vacation. That's it. Okay, guys. And then I come back and I embarrass myself some more. But while that's going, they're... They I, so I tried WoW recently with the with the last expansion I got into Ooh. it. Yeah. Worst, worst one at all. Really? Some people oh. said it was cool. I don't know. I guess it's... Mm. Uh, Yeah, mm. it's just like I'm 28 now. I can't spend... <laughs> No Wait, was way. it classic or was it like no 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 it was the one? it was the amazonian dinosaur kind of vibe okay got you yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. i hit max level and i tried doing raids and stuff is i just 
I think you have to have nostalgia attached to that game. Yes. I th- yeah, yeah. Nowadays, to get into it, you have to have friends playing it or nostalgia. Yeah. In some fashion. Or eat. And, Otherwise, okay, like, I like, had friends playing it, but it just never worked. It was like, we could never um, link up. I don't know what was going on. Oh, well, that's, yeah. You got to have like a friend group where it's like, bro, we are killing some shit. Get in Discord. Get the fuck on. Yeah. We're playing WoW right now. You're staying up till 5 a.m. Let's go. I think like, I max night. leveled solo the whole time. Oh, that's not fun. Yeah, it oh, sucked. No. I, I was like, this game blows it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, you need, the, you need the people there. That's what really makes it fun, like chilling with your buddies and like. Well, so the new expansion's coming out at some point. Oh yes. Yeah. I oh it's okay. it's in my calendar. You're ready. Dude. I gotta okay, all right. Prep so many videos beforehand because I am not doing shit during those two weeks. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. You said you played League. Did I hear that right? League. Yeah, I played that for a good period of time. Um, highest I got was plat one. And nice. Damn, so dude. Close. I was so close to diamond, dude. It was one of those again, same thing. Like, and this was before I actually like did YouTube. I was still more in school so much man like every day for like two months over or how long ever long march break is for like fucking that's like the only shit. game i play now oh yeah yeah no shit that's that's yeah, like yeah. twitch is basically a podcast and league of legends it's like all it is <laughs> okay. so yeah. people people come watch me be nice to random people like my podcast guests and mm. super toxic and mean to all the people <laughs> on the league of legends service that's the thing with Le- yeah it's a it's a to- it's weirdly toxic like instantly out of any of the games i've played like even cs or like the halo lobbies which the halo lobbies back in the day are just hilarious yeah yeah but that game is just so funny you screw up a little bit or you don't even screw up someone's just mad you didn't gank their lane of your jungle or something and it's non-stop just barrage of hate Dude, me and my girlfriend got into it one day because I said something on League of Legends and I was like, I don't mean it. It's just like, <laughs> I was like, no, but she's right. Like, I don't need to be so fucking belligerently toxic to these random p- children on the internet, probably, you know? <laughs> I know it's so, and like, I, like, I'm 24 now, like, so I'm older and it's like, I, I remember doing that when I was younger and it's like, I'm the kid, like, fuck you. Like, I don't care what you say. And now it's like, you know, like, yeah, I'm the, I'm like the adult now and it's like, Oh shit! I'm like literally telling this like 13 year old like off, and it's like okay, I gotta like rethink. All right, my man. Life. Well, the co-stream League of Legends is gonna be coming up then. I'm gonna get you back. Dude, into I'm it, down. Dude. Let's make it happen, man. Yes, I, it's fun. <laughs> I need to I need to find all the like the metal League of Legends dudes, and we're just gonna like make a make a mm-hmm. a flex queue team. That one is yeah. I know of a very few like the new me- like the metal coming to Twitch thing. They're all playing Warzone. That's the thing. It's just yeah. Really those are like the guys. Those are the casual console gamers that are like coming to. <laughs> it's funny. Console. My main duo partner is Josh from We Came as Romans. Oh shit! He like okay. only plays League of Legends. Me and him are really big into like uh, LCS, like the Pro League and all that stuff. So, okay, yeah, I got uh, you. Yeah. Got you. Um, awesome. So there's a there's a crew. It's funny, the bass player for the plot in you actually got me into it the first time. Oh, damn. Okay. Yeah, so there's, there, we exist. Dude, fucking hit me up and we'll, we'll do, that we'll, would we'll be, be so talking fun. together, dude. Yeah, dude. I'm down, man. I'll be the guy not <laughs> ganking your lane. I'll, I'll be the guy who's toxic then. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. That's awesome. Yeah, video games is always a big section on here just because, like, we are on Twitch, like I said before. I, I think metal and video games just weirdly it goes so hand they in work. hand with yeah. people. Don't know why. Yeah, the, just... not a majority of country musicians are gamers. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's like, dude. Yeah, like all this like big hit country single, but like you know, yesterday I was just fucking up some kids on Warzone. <laughs> you know, like you just don't hear that as much. They're fucking up deer in the woods, dude. Come on, man. <laughs> um, exactly. <laughs> I'm turning into a meme talking to you, so it's it's okay. I'm so it's it's the effect. You can ask chat, dude. Like it's, I'm so <laughs> sorry, dude. It just uh, happened. Where are you from? If you don't mind me asking. Toronto, actually. Canada. Oh, I did not know you're Canadian. All the weird dudes are from Canada. It's just no. All the vanilla do. guys are from Canada. Oh shit! <laughs> I, I know some weird fucking people up here, yeah. and they're like good buddies of mine. It's because it's like we're, everyone always calls us America because we're basically America. But we're also kind of nicer, but we're also weird as fuck because just Canada is kind of weird as fuck in general. Because it's like Toronto specifically is straight up New York, but without as much homeless people. It's the same deal. Like we are 
America. I love Toronto. Me. Every time I go, it's so. It's it's pretty chill. It's more and more though becoming like dumb expensive and like. Well, right. Will... I mean, that's like. I mean, you said it's your New York, but it's like kind of your LA too. Like it's like the yeah the biggest major it... city. It's where all of your like real music or movie production comes from. Yeah, not a lot of metal dudes around here, unfortunately. Um, but a lot of like R and B. Metal's like, huge in like Montreal, which is kind of crazy. Yes. Yeah, that's true. A lot more in there. Here, it's like you meet a metal dude, and you're like, "You have to be my friend forever," because no one else around. <laughs> we us got no one else, bro. This. We're a minority. We got no one else, that's dude. Sick. Yeah. I love Canada. It's nice up here. Sorry, I was I was just off on a tangent because I can get real southern real fast, being from Alabama. So talking about country actually does kind of peeves me a little bit. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, okay, yeah. no problem. <laughs> um. Let's talk about gear. So you obviously you're a guitar player, you love we already covered that you you're you're sponsored by Ernie Ball, is that what you said? Yes, Ernie Ball. I know you've been posting pictures with an Aristides lately. Yeah, so Ernie Ball's super chill. I essentially have like I have an string endorsement with them, first of all. Like that's how it started. And it was they were super chill. They're like, We'll give you some strings and hook you up. And I had like the nicest AR do. And after like a year, he was like, all right, let's get you a guitar. And I was like, what the fuck? First of all, I thought Music Man was completely separate from Ernie Ball. And he's like, they're, they're kind of similar. They're right, somewhat separate. Right, yeah. Like he could walk and, down the hall and talk to somebody. Yeah, and he was like, I got you. And so that became the start of like the addition of the two guitar endorsement, essentially. And um, when it, it was came to the eight string, though, I mean, Ernie Ball doesn't make an eight string. They know. But my A&R guy, it's like I said, super chill. Like even on my YouTube channel, I use my Schecters still if I have right, to, right? Yeah, or I yeah. use uh, I use an Eclipse, ESP Eclipse. Yeah, those are sick guitars. They're actually yeah, they're really good. Um, I got that from that Shredders of Metal, Shredders of Metal thing that there was around here in Toronto, and that I use that for like E standard because like I have two guitars, I'm not going to change tunings every single time, right? um so they're super chill with that they're like dude do whatever you want like as long as you just don't like talk shit like pretty much like about our company like right, yeah, have yeah. Fun. like we know you like our stuff we like what you do like they're super relaxed. that's awesome because a lot of companies aren't that way i know and that's why i was like oh my god i'm so lucky and i was like well i'm looking for an eight string but i want to get like kind of a semi-light endorsement with an eight string and i talked to my dude or anybody he's like like, how do you feel about it? He's like, dude, we don't, we don't make eight strings. Do whatever. The yeah, fuck want, I so. actually found that out last week too. They don't make eight strings. Yeah, like it's twenty twenty, bro. To, yeah, it's the prog. Where's the prog, dude? Eight but I get it. Up. Like, you don't want to make something shitty, so like. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I essentially went to Nam in search for other things, but also I was in search for like an eight string endorsement. I knew Mayonnaise, I knew Aristides, and I knew a bunch of others like Ormsby, and I went to all the booths. And I was really liking what I was seeing. I was talking to the guys, trying to like sweet talk with like, hey guys, I'm obviously super, super famous on YouTube. Like, <laughs> you know. Like, yeah, that's just the NAMM life for sure. Yeah, right. Um, and it was working. And But the thing is, the last booth I went to was Aristides. Or Aristides. I still don't know how to say the fucking name. And I Aristides. Like yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. And I went to the booth and it literally looked like art on the walls. And yeah. then I played the guitar and I was like. They play phenomenally. They're insane. Yeah. It's so good. Dude. It's like I it's guess so because they do that the the like whatever material they use, they mold it. They don't yeah. have to think about like setting it up in a way. Like they don't have to mm -hmm. bend this wood in a direction. They have that shit calculated. Dude, it's so nice. And okay. as soon as I lay my hands on that, I was like, even though like some of the other companies were like, Yeah, we'll get you like a, a free one, you know. I'm like, sick. These guys were like, Well, we're still like kind of custom company, so we're not gonna get you a free one. And I was like, but I really want it. So I was like, <laughs> fuck it. And I just like dropped wow. dumb money. That's awesome. But it was like, That's so, sick. so worth it. And so I have like, they, the light endorsement was the discount they offered right, essentially, yeah, yeah. which was still helpful, but like, Jesus Christ. But that guitar, man. Yeah. I have the Aristides, the two, uh, the JP6, JP7, exact same thing, Matt Black. I literally told yeah. him the same thing. So I was just like, I love this guitar. So just give me the Did you do strings. the raw finish that they are considered? For Aristides, yeah. yeah. I, I was not going to. Yeah. I well, I actually wait. like the way the raw feels more. So, yeah, it's, yeah, it feels like a satin. Like, yeah. I love that. Yeah. It's amazing. But um, yeah, so I have the 8, the 7, the 6. I have my Schecter 6, my Schecter 7. I have that ESP Eclipse. And then I just have like an acoustic Taylor. Do you just keep one. all the stock pickups and all those guitars? 
Yeah, honestly. That doesn't um, like drive you crazy when you're recording. <laughs> no, I mean the Aristides sounds god tier. My the Crunch Lab, I believe my JP6 yeah. has like it's one of some of the best pickups I've ever heard. Like I just love the sound of those. In my seven, I think they're the same pickups. They just sound a little different. Well, so it's just it's the, receiving the tuning. Yeah. That's yeah it, it's just working a little bit differently so i might eventually see if i can swap those out but other than that like the crunch labs work great and when i had the Schecters, i didn't even know like what pickups were <laughs> what they were so, what they were yeah, yeah like it was just like oh it's it's this thing right like it's the no it's noise and something. <laughs> yeah yeah i didn't even know what they did so i just they've always been the same pickups and they've worked for me so yeah <laughs> well because i mean like you were because you're on youtube you record everything Yes. So, like, people would be surprised how meticulous you have to be about gear and tone because yeah. it's immortalized. Exactly. Like, it took me a long time to find tone a tone I like, and then once I found it, though, like, I was stuck with it for like four years. Like, I do not. So, with what that. are you using? Axe Effects. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just straight into the computer. Straight into the computer. Do you Axe even effect. use a interface, or are you using the Axe Effects as your interface? I use the Axifex as my interface. Yep, wow. Funny enough, yeah, dude, like, that's simple as fuck. Yeah, super simple. But as my mic, actually, I um, I have a different interface for a mic. My mic talking and shit. That I'm using the UR22. That's something I've just had for like ever by Steinberg. Um, it just does the job. It's nothing special, yeah, yeah. really. It just makes it so I can talk. <laughs> but Axifex, literally, if anyone's like Nick, how do I get your tone? I'm, I say you go save us some money and buy a fucking Axifex. You know, it's just. <laughs> It's just that's all I do is Axe Effects. Axe Effects has its like cult following almost. I'm definitely a part of that. Yeah. And I and I'm not even like a gent kid who goes on tour who needs like the lightweight Axe Effects. I'm just a gent kid who was in his room who <laughs> wanted to be that who got an Axe Effects. Well, Axe Effects is most certainly a bedroom instrument because yes. I could I could accumulate all the hours I've ever spent touring in a band and it still wouldn't give me enough to know how to work an Axe Effects, I don't think. Like there's <laughs> so many it's options true. it's endless you can literally scrap your tone and rebuild it a million different ways it's crazy yep. <laughs> i got called yeah, a boomer in the chat for saying that i've been scared to update my firmware because i know when you do the tone slightly changes and i did that one time never again i'm still wow. using like, that's like annoying. three years ago it's annoying but like yeah so i'm still using like th three years ago firmware so i can't actually download any custom tones or anything anymore because they're all of the new firmware so i'm literally using this old as shit firmware you're gonna have to do so it eventually bro do i it's like an <laughs> iphone right like eventually it's just not gonna be compatible or it's I gonna just shit gotta itself really work fractal for an endorsement so i get the axe fx3 instead and we'll be good dude we'll be good i won't have the three worry. looks powerful and sick it does man it does but it's like even just the thought of redoing my tones gives me like just i just want to instantly throw my guitars out the building <laughs> like okay you know like i just don't even want to think about it so i just i'm like i'm good with what i got thank you so do you ever tweak ever um like for okay for covers majority if it's like a metalcore song like straight up it's my nick nocturnal metalcore rhythm tone that yeah. i use for my rhythm tone for everything yeah. pretty much I do have slightly different variations of that for just different guitars, though. Like if I use my seven versus my six, I have slight variants and stuff. Other than that, like it's the same thing. It's just my basic rhythm tone, which isn't too complex or anything. And then I do, um, I have an ambient lead tone, which I do two different types of ambient tones. It's usually a distorted ambient as well as a clean ambient. That I mess with a little bit more with the ambient tones because they're so subtle. It's like there's so much reverb right. going on. You don't even notice the change. So those I mess with a decent bit more. And then I just have like a lead tone, which is pretty much my rhythm tone. Mids are a bit boosted. And then I just smash some reverb on it. Those are my four tones. And if I have to do like a guitar cover with that's so different from my tones, then I, you know, go in and try to make a meticulous tone for that. But So you, you'll build one from scratch, you won't? Yeah, if I have to, but 95% of my tones, it's the same thing. And people are always like, dude, your tone sounds really good in this cover. I'm like, I used the same one for the last fucking like 200 videos. I mean, once dude, he, like, I, I'm the same way. I bought a Kemper yeah. five years ago now. Okay. And I haven't changed the tone since. I've been touring on the same tone for five yeah. years. If it, if it sounds good, why break it? Like, it's yeah, just, yeah, yeah. It's good. Like, I'm good, man. <laughs> exactly. For sure. Uh, what are you recording? Cubase. Wow, I, I meet a decent amount of Cubase people actually. 
I, so the reason I started with Cubase is because it was just the first thing, like when I was a young kid, like 12 or however the fuck old I was, I just went in there and was whatever the, the local store sold. And it was Cubase. You bought and like I the program like, itself? Yeah. I remember the, being yeah. younger and buying their version of the interface and it like came with a version of Cubase. Yeah. Okay. That's sorry. That is what I bought. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I nailed it. That's, that's, that's what I, you're, yeah. you're right. Yeah. So I got that and I was just like, oh, it's like, it's, it, it, I like it because it's just kind of colorful and easy. Like it's very chill. I like it. It's like, yeah. I don't know when I go online and even though I haven't used a lot of the different DAWs, like just when I see them being used, it like gives me a headache. There's just so many more knobs. It seems so cluttered with everything. And I just, I'm like, I don't want to fuck with that. Like I like Cubase because it's just like very clean and simple looking. And that's why it's just like over the years, even though I was kind of forced to use that one, I just stuck with it yeah. because, well, first of all, well, once you learn one there, DAW, right? it's pretty awful to learn it. <laughs> yeah. I, it's speaking from experience because mm -hmm. our drummer programs all of our sets and pro tools Jesus. but i learned how to do everything on logic because i had a mac right and now i lost my mac but i don't want to pay for pro tools so i switched to reaper oh, God. so I, i've i've been through the ringer for sure like it's like Jesus. like okay learning photoshop sucks but yeah. imagine oh, yeah. imagine learning three different photoshops <laughs> That essentially all do the same thing, but with different commands. It's, dude, it's, it's insane. And that's why I was like, even, I actually had like a huge, um, I forgot the word where it's like, it's tough to learn. Like it took me like two years to really understand. Learning Cubase curve? At all. Yeah, learning curve. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. In the first place, like I was, I was like so frustrated all the time. And I was like, what do I do? How do I do this? And all that shit. And after I got over that curve, I was like, I'm never doing this with something else like that. <laughs> yes like yeah, yeah. i'm just done and the saddest part is that i i use cubase elements to this day i use the elements version that's like 90 bucks i don't even have the full cubase well you don't version, need so. it that's true but it's also a little embarrassing when people are like hey record stems and send me the stems and you see with the full version you can batch export oh uh, with the elements version you have to go through each individual <laughs> track I'm not even joking. Well, now I just and want to send you all kinds of stems just to. <laughs> and literally, so if I have like 20 stems, it's, and it's the whole song, like three minutes, waiting two minutes, one track done. Okay. Waiting two minutes, right. next track done. That's the only con. That I hurts me down it. here, like in my gut. Like that. It, it hurts. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. But dude, I saved like 200 bucks. Like, <laughs> worth? So Question worth it. Question mark. So worth it, obviously. <laughs> Yeah, so I still use the Elements version, but it works, man. Hey, yeah, I, I, like it. I just said, I'm using Reaper. That's just, you just <laughs> download it for free off the internet and then never stop running the license. <laughs> Literally, I haven't paid for it. They're just like, are you going to pay for it yet? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I got I'm you. I'm trying bro. it out, I'm, though. I'm, dude, I'm, I'm an era. We got you. Like, just, you'll see us soon, okay? Like, just, we got you. Yeah, we got just, you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> well, and also you start using Reaper live because it takes no computer power and it doesn't make your laptop nice, crash. Yeah. yeah, stuff like that. Oh god, that's horrible. I've never had to deal with those. Oh things, right, yeah, you don't tour. Yeah, I like I played a little live shows when I was younger, like with stupid bands and high school bands and shit like that. But like, I miss those days of, personally. <laughs> those days, I miss yeah. those days when, when I fuck up and I didn't care. I still thought I was the coolest kid <laughs> in the room. You know? <laughs> yeah, dude that's the best and it's like i'm so lucky i never have to deal with like especially nowadays i know it's all electronic with everything and like setting everything up meticulously it just takes one thing your computer screwing up hey guys sorry like we can't play the set because our computer broke yeah, you know? well even yeah it sucks because like we're still pretty analog and i'm like even trying to make efforts to go more like i'm playing a tube head now again mm -hmm. okay and i'm trying to like really maintain my roots as like a guitar right, right. player <laughs> uh <laughs> but we've since moving to in-ears that's a whole other beast too Ooh, okay. like that's i've probably spent the last two or three years of my life really just trying to understand like xlr roots yeah, for dude. our entire set and goddamn drummers man why do they need like 32 xlrs it's terrible <laughs> drummers. i don't know that struggle because i always program my drums and that's it yeah, i'm just good forever just well if you play live you'll need the laptop i'll say that much Dude, that's true i'll need the laptop man Ugh. <laughs> okay i'll get a, i'll get a session drummer i'll get a session drummer I'll yeah just, and just pay play. some amazing freak a little bit of money and he'll just <laughs> session yeah, dude, dude session musicians are the sickest shredders ever 
I've met a few and they're they're so nice and they're so talented. And it's like whenever I've asked them why don't you want to be in the band, they're like, because fuck that. It's Does just I like make why money want... not being in a band. Yeah. I want to actually make money and not own <laughs> like a part of something that's like not right. worth nothing. I just want to get my paid fixed amount, go home and do my own thing. And I'm I mean, like, so oh. Jesse has a side project rock band called ghost atlas are you familiar with that band yeah, yeah. That, so that. he i don't think he's toured with the same band once oh, he, he just gets his friends or like a session crew and mm. it, they shred every time i see him live it's different people but they nail it so it's like it works yeah, yeah. that's awesome man. the way of the world now so yeah session thing is it's so it's a lot more popular now i think than it kind of used to be and it's just like there's a lot of just really good musicians that you can just be like hey you and they're like i got you well, and like and you like, can attest to the mm -hmm. like you write a lot of material for a lot of musicians, but you dude playing guitar, you know what I mean? Like Okay, yeah. Like if you wanted to do you think if you will you ever get to the point to where you write stuff and you have musicians track it for the albums? Um not drums because I actually love drum. Like I love programming. It's so fun to me because it feels like such an important part of even the guitar work in a weird no sense. i know like, I, yeah with our genre for sure especially yeah and it's it i love doing it actually myself which is kind of funny but you never just, just pay a drummer to like track exactly what you programmed so that it was like done. sound better yeah maybe it would depend on the drummer and bassist it's a bassist i can just get my eight string guitar and tune down dude we're good with that okay like don't worry um <laughs> but yeah the drummer is the fun thing and then <laughs> God, um, <laughs> savage. I don't actually hate bassists that much. Okay. No, I, it's, I, I, you I, have I, to for the meme. I get it. Yeah. For the meme. There are some bassists that, like, even when I've done reaction videos, like, I see and I'm like, this guy just carried the whole band on their fucking backs. This bassist. It's rare as shit. Does not happen often. Well, once again, like, in our genre, like, yeah. even most bass players in our genre, I think, are just the guitar players that got elbowed <laughs> out of they're... their spot. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's the it's the bassist who got kicked out or canceled, and then they're like, okay, let's just get this guitarist and bring him. Hey, in I have a soft body. spot for bass players. I played bass for Era for two years, I think. Oh damn! Yeah, I know that. yeah. In Augment, I was the bass player. Oh shit! Oh, that was, that was my... dude. Augment's how 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 often do you? Because I know I see it always in the comments. Like, dude, Augment's so sick, dude. And like... I think we finally. I said it. We have like this like shit posting Facebook group about era right, right. and i love all those people but i also despise all those people because <laughs> like they're all augment fanboys you know what i mean i um, dude i know that's the era meme is like where's where's the augment like fucking yeah. I've, I've, I've i've liked your guys stuff for like ever like i liked all your albums well like, and now so because fun. so there's like two generations of era i guess there's right, right impulse right. augment with our old vocalist it's like the like the dudes are like straight out of high school yeah, it's yeah. its own like sentient creation of music, mm -hmm. and then sh shit happened, and then we became yeah. this new band that mm -hmm. had came out with. But now Drift Neon and with the upcoming album, we overpower that little augment group, right? Like, okay, good, good. <laughs> yeah, and like the other day, I was like, wow, there's people defending augment in this chat. I'm cool. proud of you guys. I'm, I'm proud of you guys. That's awesome. Yeah, I. That's also something as a band, I, I know it's a huge struggle. That's a lot of bands go through of like, well, their old shit was better. Here's the thing is that I experience it, but I also, there's bands I feel that way about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's like, like I can't help. And it's like, it goes back to the World of Warcraft thing. Like you have nostalgia attached to music every time you hear it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's just, it's crazy. I don't think people really realize how much nostalgia drives what they do every day. Oh yeah. Like the definitely. music they listen to, the things like it's just like why are we back on synthwave? Yeah. <laughs> why do you think we're listening to shit that people made in the 80s? It's because it's nostalgic. Yep. That's mm -hmm. why Stranger Things is huge right now. It's nostalgic. It's yeah. like mm -hmm. Um I have so much respect though for just like bands that do like accept that even though they still do their own thing. It's like just they're like they're aware of it cuz there's so many bands that even like I've seen and known they're like they have so much hate for people that just sometimes like their old stuff it's like they were then they start to hate their own old stuff and it's such a right weird, but yeah like, yeah yeah i i and got it, there for a little bit a little bit yeah, yeah. <laughs> like i get why it happened but like yeah, here's yeah. the thing it's like 
I grew up, I got older, I realized like, look, even you guys don't want us releasing the same album over and over again. You guys oh, would yeah, fucking exactly. hate us. Like, mm-hmm. and then like the worst case scenario is like, I don't mind playing hybrid earth live, like whatever. Like <laughs> as mm-hmm. long as I always play that live, people will still come see us because they know we're going to be <laughs> playing that. You know, it's like, even if the augment mm-hmm. fanboys come to our shows now, they know they're going to hear a hybrid earth or whatever. It's like, right. Exactly. But they're fucking happy, whatever they can. Yeah. That that's great because again, yeah, so many bands like it's like they despise it, and they go out of their way almost. That's the weird thing is like to like make sure none of their old stuff is ever heard again, kind of because they're just like so sick. But it's like it's I have a lot of respect for bands that have to deal with the bullshit because I get it too. It's so annoying, but it's still like okay, guys, like here, like we'll give you some, like just chill the fuck. Do you out, have the you know equivalent I mean? of that, like? um a little bit with youtube with guitar covers because i don't do them as much in a weird way they're like where's the guitar cover nick what the fuck even though it's kind of different because it's just completely different like con um source of content where it's like that's still just music this is like a different medium of entertainment i guess like if i do a reaction versus a guitar cover it's like completely different in that sense and people like where are the guitar covers dude i love reactions too it's like (laughs) it's so like it's the laziest thing I think you could do as far as entertainment goes. Like I the what? most viewers I've had on my Twitch yet was just reacting to stuff. And I was like, mm. I'm not doing anything. <laughs> I call myself a glorified DJ pretty much. That's do you do see on. your below your riff reactor on your on my on my podcast right now? Yeah. It says <laughs> I don't even know. I, what's funny is I put this stuff under, but I don't oh even my think... God, I didn't, wait, oh, God, oh, oh, my God. Meme artist riff reactor. Yeah. Yes, dude. Thank you. That is actually factual right there. Thank that you, is man. just... You got it right on. I put a um, lot of thought into those, you know? <laughs> but, also, uh, reactor yeah. looks cool because it looks like a nuclear reactor. So you're a riff reactor. I'm much less explosive. It's okay, guys. <sighs> <laughs> I also have much worse jokes. But um, yeah, essentially, the re- that's the thing, man. With and I guitar covers, people are like Nick, do the guitar cover, and I get it because it takes more skill. Okay, hold on. Someone just said Nick Lear reactor, and he's winning. Someone gift him a sub yeah, right dude. now because that was the Someone sickest pun I've ever up. seen in my life. <laughs> Sorry, not to cut you off. Uh, no, yeah. Um, so and I get why people want me to do guitar guitar covers because first of all, I built my fan base with that, but also like it takes skill and like a react- <laughs> dude, you can play guitar. No I, no, I mean, like, a guitar cover takes skill, but, like, you a reverse reaction, right? Like, so new song comes out. New era song comes out. Perfect example. Do you do the guitar cover and show that you can play guitar? Or do you just sit there and react? You know what I mean? And it's like, when I pick the react, I can tell some people's hearts crying a little bit because they wanted to see me use that, I guess, talent and our expertise that at least I've built up over the years. It's like, Nick, you're lucky enough to have that like at least use it cuz you know there's people who can't do that shit right even though i'm still by no means crazy good guitar fuck no i suck but like i get that feeling whereas like reactions anyone in their mum can pick up a camera actually anybody oh like, yeah no... some like yeah. admittedly i watched i've been watching a lot of snowblood reactions cuz it feels good like when people are like that's st- great yeah yeah when yeah. people are stoked on your music mm-hmm. but there's some there's some crazy ones out there like just it's like so some dude and his girlfriend in his car, like, "Hey, baby, what you think of this?" <laughs> this is some, this is era, but uh, Snowblood. I don't know. It's like, <laughs> wow. Yeah, but you're right. Anyone can make a reaction video. Yeah, and and that's the thing is the barrier to entry. And I remember even when I was doing covers back then, there was like the cover people that you'd always see, and then they die off, and then that's part of why I became larger as a youtuber is because i was just the last cover dude standing to be fucking honest yeah. that was it so everyone else just died off because there's that barrier trench where it's hard to do it takes a lot more time and now with reactions they're everywhere and i'm like every day i just I, there's just new channels non-stop and for me I, I like it and hate it i hate it in the fact that it's just very oversaturated and i know with the music scene a lot of things that just get oversaturated just die or they hate it and they move on to something else and that's yeah. part of why i'm like that's what i'm scared about more so i guess it's like this is a cool medium that again hasn't it's not like new to react to something but it's newer to metal react to something and i like that as a medium and that's why i still that's why i do them but like 
knowing it's so easy that everyone does it, people are just going to get so sick of it so fast that it's kind of scary to me. But at the same time, I'm also like super excited for people that maybe don't have musical talent or whatever that just can't play an instrument. I do love those reactions. Mm -hmm. There's a couple, yeah. there's a guy named Gibby Gang. We watched that guy. I know him, yeah. He's fucking hilarious. He's funny. He has no idea what he's talking about ever. <laughs> and that's what's so good to me. It's like, because yeah. there's, I mean, in all reality, that's like a majority of our fans probably like. It's just consumers. Right. That's, right. Yeah. It's like not everyone who's going to listen to your shit is a fucking prog musician with their glasses on going like, mm, this polyrhythm was a little bit uh, awkward. Which I've here, seen you know? that, that. Um, yeah. <laughs> you've seen that sketch yes well, yeah, I was like, what am I trying to say alternate yeah, uh, yeah I, th I know what you, I think I know what you're saying yeah, yeah. and that's that's the, I love that too is like you just get a, an honest consumer base like your actual fan base most of the time you know reaction and I love seeing that I love that people can express their opinions and that actually has to to me when I see an honest consumer reaction that's really good at it and is honest versus a like very analytical person i actually sometimes respect the consumer more because they're the one who's actually going to kind of give me the advice i need for right. to track them exactly right yeah um uh, but at the same time man the reactions have become a lot of channels they just do it to get views or money it's not a lot of money in adsense i'm gonna tell y'all that right fucking now you don't make shit on youtube really adsense is not a friend but um, I think YouTube just, is like literally statistically the lowest, like yeah. <laughs> yeah. not for like what is paid out. I think YouTube pays out some of the biggest amount of money mm -hmm. ever. Yeah. But like if I put a song on a bunch of different websites mm -hmm. or streaming services, YouTube would pay me the the smallest amount for at the same material I put everywhere. Else. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's so weird seeing that and it would, even like with with you know my channel we always we were checking out reactions to like the terminus stuff the new stuff like i made a point of like i'm very in the reaction scene so i'm like okay i'm going to be a part of it i want to watch every right, single yeah. fucking reaction right and the majority of them because we're we were smaller we're all just like it was the same thing like a dude was in his car just fucking jamming out he was smoking a blunt halfway through like i love seeing that shit oh that's yeah, like, yeah as real and as authentic as it gets and then there's some other people with like really cool effects and then there's some people you can tell are just there to do it and those are the people i'm kind of like eh, like yeah. they don't really care they're just there like either it'll get you views or whatever or like the guy that i'm not speaking of any specific guy but mm -hmm. the guy that's like pausing the music video to tell you to follow his channel and like <laughs> oh my god P dude <sighs> i have a pet peeve when people <laughs> <laughs> I, I love just, it just oh i love it you just got triggered as fuck i just got so triggered so and i'm not calling out any of my buddies who do this because they actually provide good content and they deserve to do this but there's so many fucking people at the start of their channel it's three minutes of hey guys uh hit subscribe button even though you haven't seen the video yet and you don't even know if it's worth it hit the like button because i'm obviously better than everybody um here's my patreon <laughs> Here's my fucking Twitch. I just started on there because I'm better than everybody. And even though I haven't showed you anything yet, you should do it. And it's just three minutes of self-promotion, but you haven't fucking shown like, me Like there's anything no content yet. attached to it. Like, yeah, it's just, I'm taking your word. <laughs> I'm going to make you a know. video that's going to go viral. I'm already calling it for sure. And it's just going to be five <laughs> minutes of me telling you to go follow all my things. I'm like, all right, well, I'll see you guys later. That's going to be the yeah. whole video. I just can't with that because it's like, okay, do that after. Do that at the end when you've given me like proof of concept that I should do these things. But it's like before, literally the most I do is after this, I'm streaming on Twitch. I do dumb shit. Follow me. Okay, let's go. <laughs> like right. fastest thing I'll do because no one wants to sit there for three minutes and hear you talk about like that. Like I said, it's as easy as grabbing that little ball and throwing it to the right. It's, you're, you're past yeah, it. Man. Yeah, man. But yeah, actually, I want I what I love now as like becoming a new like meta, as you could say, kind of is bands watching reaction videos, like the fact that even you watch my reaction to Snowblood shit like that. Like, that's something still so new to me as a creator, because like, dude, when I did covers back then, no band gave a fuck that I did a cover, really. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, like, I, li I like the videos that are coming out of like band members watching covers, too. Like, yeah, like the YouTube video, like the inception of Mm -hmm. like just the the combination of those two worlds like thank god like i love seeing that because like i did that shit for four years covers four years 
not that I expected a band to care, but just obviously bands didn't right. give a shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? And now to see like you just do a reaction and like it's like a trend for bands almost to react. Yep. It's like that's their trending content. While for YouTubers, the trend is to do the reaction. It, but it's like also scary because on the other end of the spectrum, like I'm mm. not the guy that doesn't know anything. I think I know too much. Like I know all the shit <laughs> that goes on behind the curtains. So like I can't mm. do a lot of reactions because I'm like, got you. This part in this song is probably going to be on the computer live, and he'll fill the part with this atmospheric. <laughs> like I just I don't want to be that fucking guy. You know, it's like you don't want to be that yeah. guy. No, I got you, man. I got you. And it, like with my videos, I think the only way I've kind of carved my somewhat niche in that area is just. I have my reaction, which people can relate to for like the three minutes. And then I the love that. I really okay. did. I, and it, <laughs> admittedly, I didn't even realize you did that at first. Like you have like a, a, a reaction and then you have a yeah. breakdown for what, like a, yeah. yeah. Um, exactly. Before I cut you off. Sorry. Um, no. Yeah. I watched your reaction and then I just went on to the next video. <laughs> That's what people usually do. And I was I like, he didn't say much, but all right, whatever. And then oh. I think uh, I was looking through more videos and I noticed like it now YouTube will show you like what you've watched so far. Yeah, yeah. And I went back and finished it. I was like, that was so sweet of him. All right. Was, <laughs> yeah, because I like I like I don't I'm not a huge fan of the pausing thing. I know some people do it and it's it's because they sometimes need it. Like I get it. They want to like they can't express their thoughts while also still paying attention while they're expressing their thoughts. So they like literally need to pause to be like, this is what my brain just ingested. Let me, you know, explain it. Like, I get that, even though to me, that does, it does disrupt the flow. And that's why, like, I've never done that. But that's also why, like, my reaction is just the reaction. And then I literally take, like, 10 I minutes. I love that because it's hard for yeah. me to watch reaction videos. Like, and then they talk. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, dude, yeah. you don't even remember what the part sounded like when you went into the, the chorus or, like... <laughs> It disrupts because that's not to me the way anyone naturally consumes music. So it's not as authentic as a way for me to consume it and have that experience. I love that. It I just, love that you think about that. Yeah. I, I, yeah. It's, it's so important for me to consume the music the way that the artist wanted me to kind of consume it. I kind of had and a feeling that this podcast is going to be great because I tend to notice like even you, you realize you're like, you're Mimi and your ways of, of like mm. YouTube, but like, I don't think anyone just gets successful in any platform by chance. Like, you know what you're talking about. And I knew that you would be. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah. You hear that? He's not just a meme guys. I'm not, he knows I'm what he's doing. Meme. I'm a big brain meme guys. Okay. <laughs> he's a five head. <laughs> um, so, you know, yeah, man. And it's, it's weird because I know, my meme side, like that's me. That's not like me putting on a, a show or a personality. Like that's done. That's me being a dumbass. Like, well, it's also that, like, still part of your personality too. Yeah. Like if I'm gaming, there you go. Like you have meme Nick all fucking day. <laughs> you know I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's it. So yeah. I, I like showcasing that side because it's just me and I can be more authentic in that sense. And it shows that personality, which also I know some people, even when I'm streaming can really relate to it. And they're a lot more comfortable and that's great i like that relationship rather than one of the two of either just being like a hardcore musician just super serious dude all the time because i feel like that's it for me i know it would be harder to like re uh, relate with my consumers yeah, and yeah. all of that because they just see me as some weird guitar fast player guy right they can't relate as much but and then there's the other side of the spectrum where you're just too much of a character right where you're just that too, I don't think you can relate too much because you're too much of a character. Like it's right. very obvious if you're not, like you're just a weird clown at that point. Right. <laughs> was, yeah. Right. And I try to balance those two because I don't want to, I just, that's really, it. I just want people to watch my shit and be like, oh, the first thought is like, oh, he's kind of like, he's kind of funny or he's kind of cool. And like, oh, he can actually do this shit. That's usually like the afterthought I hope of right. like, oh, he can actually play guitar. Or like actually write music, kind of, you know. Like, I get it. But it's that weird dynamic of trying to balancing them both, and it's it sometimes hits, sometimes misses. You know, I get the people who are like, "Why don't you play real guitar?" Or like, and I'm like, oh, "I did that for four fucking years, dude." Like, you know, or well, like, and like you, you never stopped. Yeah, I know. You're not and filming yourself do doing it, but it's yeah, like that. That's <laughs> I get the weird. Other yeah, yeah. Yeah, of like, oh, why, like, um, why, why are you so serious on guitar? Or I guess you know, let why? me ask you this: How often do you just play guitar to play, like hobby style? 
Um, decently often, like yeah. I just like even like it's usually at night. I'm so fucking weird. Like I'll just be finished my day of work and I'll just like stare at my guitar in the corner, like in like a dirty way. I'm just like, I'm gonna pick you up right now. We're gonna do some shit, <laughs> you know, like that kind of way. <laughs> It and wasn't dirty until you said that, but I don't think that's a, weird I, at all. I think, like, yeah. they even just say that, like, creatives in their minds are just more creative at night, and that's when I play most of my... Yeah. Most of my guitar, like, all throughout the day, I'm, like, running my exercises or playing through air song or learning something mm. else, but then at night, that's when I, like, crank up my delay and reverb, and I just get sucked into my, like, sound as as like a whole dude yeah. the feels are reels at that moment it's such a weird thing where it's like you feel like no one else can fuck with you at that moment everything's yeah. shut off and you're just like you're just jamming you're like yes this is my thing and yeah like i i do that then but most of my guitar playing is like four videos to be honest because it's just i make videos so much that it's like either i'm doing a guitar cover or making my weird ass monday video with like heaviest riffs compilations or like whatever that requires guitar playing or just something to do it or like i have to write for my band and i'm like fuck you know it's like <laughs> it's it's much more rare when that of me just literally sitting down for the point of it but they happen they happen here and there decently frequently like at night <laughs> if that makes sense but qu- a question i actually had for you um like so as a as oh. a person in a band because i love hearing that perspective right because i'm i'm on that youtube side like i'm obviously i'm a musician but it's like it's very different you know the things i encounter all that shit as a perspective of like a band member, how do you view, I guess, like the YouTube or like now YouTube Twitch world, like back then versus like now with everyone kind of being on it? Uh, it's like he said, um, right now, I think it's oversaturated. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's pros and cons, obviously. Like a pro is, is if you take 50 guys from bands in our scene right. and you throw them on Twitch, they can, it is a social media platform. Mm-hmm. They, they can all mutually benefit from each other. Yeah. And that's super positive. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I mean, I started doing this podcast. I'm doing it every Wednesday, but there's like 16 other metal dudes streaming right now. And it's like, yeah, that hurts me too. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just stuff like that. But like, I know just as well as you do as someone who has worked a platform long enough that the people who don't care about Twitch or don't actually plan on making content, they're eventually not going to do it. And the people who are making content, they... Yeah, I have a very like weird view. Us And it's like, I love musicians and I met a lot of my buddies are musicians. And I met a lot of musicians through Twitch, which is great because that's the best part about having YouTube as the platform. Because I come on here... And I made a point of getting partnered just to have kind of proof of concept in my name when I go to like a musician because they don't know me, right? Or someone doesn't know me. Because no matter what, if I type in that chat, they'd be like, that person yeah, in yeah, some yeah. weird way matters on here and I have to make that connection. Yeah. So that for networking for me has been like super easy because I've, I've known that that's- It's funny that that's a thing because like mm. you don't want it to be because it's so superficial. Yeah. But like once I yes. got my check on Instagram, people- I've never had a non-responded DM in my life. <laughs> like it's like, yeah. like it could be the biggest gear company, and I'm like, mm. that's sick. And they're like, they they read it, you know. It's like, <laughs> like oh, fuck, I got a blue it, fucking check mark, bro. You can't fuck with me. It's the value thing, and I mean that's just how it works in the music industry, regardless if it's YouTube or just right. the actual industry. It's like you have your value. You have to you have to understand your own value and how it's perceived by other people in that industry or you're going to get taken advantage of, or not take as many opportunities as you're supposed to. It's one or the other, right? So really understanding your value of how people view you and that. I know, I've known that for a long time. It's like so fucking important. So little things like that, even though, like, I don't give a fuck if I have a check mark. I know to other people that's very important and that's how they perceive and add value to my name. So I'll do that shit if I got you. (laughs) So let me get deep for a second. Okay, let's get deep. deep. To, to, To dive further into that question. Mm-hmm. Um, every touring musician's life has been so drastically altered this year. Yeah. Um, a lot of my friends are depressed. Uh, like it doesn't feel like I'm in a band at all. Like yeah. because, um, with COVID, um, I we might be releasing music, but that's something that was always done around touring mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. Um. 
and it's just weird like literally half of the year every year since i've been in a band i have not been home now i'm just wow home and that's something i didn't even really realize until halfway through talking that like you don't know that you have not experienced yeah. that it's like um so on that end i think twitch is a saving grace for musicians because we get to connect with the people that normally we'd be able to connect with in real life for mm -hmm. um dude it's so weird i i've always been a gamer and i've always had like my gaming friends and this is like funny a lot of the people that we like crash with on tour and like hang out with are people i met through like playstation oh shit. okay that's awesome so it's that community is so real like mm. every single name flashing on this twitch chat right now is mm. people across the country that normally i could just go play a show for but i can't right now and so right on that end of it twitch is so sick and dude yeah i think for a lot like yes there's going to be the guy like it goes back to the reaction videos like there's going to be the people that are just doing it because they can and there might be money to be made but i also think there are a decent handful of people who like this is a way to connect that right now we don't have a choice to mm -hmm. no dude I, I feel for you all on that a few of my musicians buddy it's like yeah i see it and it's like it's like what do we do like we toured all our lives and it's just like that like haunting like <sighs> It's what, weird. You know? It's so weird. It's like even parts of tour, like I, I normally I'd be like, I don't need that. I, I'd rather stay at home and be comfortable. Mm. But like when you're when you have no option, mm. it's super strange. I can imagine, man. And I, yeah, like that's, that's the thing about Twitch. Like all the musicians came on here and like I loved seeing that because it's kind of like, yes, they're all coming kind of to my world. It's unfortunate that they had to come. Have to? Of right. Yeah. 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 That was like the unfortunate thing, but I was like, well, you know what? They're finally coming to this world and you know, it's, it's a really cool world as I'm calling it. Like yeah. the YouTube, just these, I don't know what to call social media. No, it, it's like, super, it's so real yeah. because there's, yeah. there's so much about my world you don't know. And it's so interesting. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, but Hey, I'm sitting here talking with you right now and we wouldn't be doing that had I not come. You know what I mean? Like it's like yeah. the connections are super real. I think I think once this pandemic gets figured out that maybe we'll come back like all musicians. I'm not talking about era just specifically, but like I think mm. it's going to come back hard. Oh, dude. Yeah, my my predictions is this is that I I'll, even though there's so many musicians on Twitch right now and some of them are it's funny cuz you watch them and some of them you are doing cuz they're like they're real entertainers like they're having fun and they want to connect with their fans like i watch a few of those and i love watching that i'm like yes thank you and there's some that like are just kind of sitting there cuz they've been told that's the only thing they can do in a sense and for those i almost feel bad it's like you don't i know you don't really want to be here it's on your fucking face yeah. that you're just sitting there yeah. playing warzone just staring and then there's like a a comment ever here and you're like yeah you know Thanks, it's like you're bro just there. Yeah, yeah you're just there to be there and there's so many musicians coming over and again as uh it's sad that how it how that happened that you guys come over i'm glad to see just musicians in general like come over and well i can i can gladly say that i'm not new i got affiliate okay good. two and a half years ago because i played oh. destiny competitively that's awesome so like I'm lucky yeah. because I'm I'm a diehard gamer and that's what Twitch is to me first. Yeah. So my podcast is like my way of like bringing something from my world into the Twitch community. Mm -hmm. But the reason I love it is because there's no better way to make a connection. Like I know you as a person now. Like mm. I'll always have that, you know. What I mean? no. Yeah, dude, likewise. But sadly, <laughs> like I said, my, the other side of my Twitch is people seeing the real gamer version of me. <laughs> that has always been there you know what i mean yeah dude it's it's a weird world now man with musicians and it's cool being able to network and all that stuff i do love that like being able to just be like oh like fucking dicky from infinite annihilator is on let's just hop by in his channel hey what's up oh dude i know you from your videos oh sick let's do something and yeah. then you do something whereas like before that would be this huge battle of like right. do i have a manager like i want to hit up them up to do something like is it weird 
you know, it's not really a collab thing. I think it's a guest vocal. So how much are they going to charge? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like all those things. And it's like, because you, you just need that simple one in, in a sense of like, okay, you're following each other on Instagram, following each other on Twitter. And like Twitch has just made that dumb easy. Well, right. Because you're, you're seeing the answer done in real time. There's, yeah, that's real time. Wild. Yeah. And my kind of assumption is that when fans finally will go on tour, it's going to be this mass. It's going to first be, okay, guys, I can't wait to go on tour, but I'm still going to stream. <laughs> but let's be honest here. 95% of the dudes, like the musician dudes who are on here. That's going to be the, yeah, I guess once the pandemic lifts and all that, like, yeah, so many streamers are going to drop off. They're just, yeah, they're, they're going to say GG and, or, and there's going to be some that really, I think, love it so much that they're going to make it in there no matter what, while they're on tour. And right. Stream. That's, I, I love and that's like that. what I said, the guys who actually make content and creating it. And they're going to be the ones who are last man standing. And guess what? When that mass exodus happens, there's still all this viewership though on Twitch that has now been brought here from the music world. They're going to have to go somewhere. Dude, it's crazy gonna... how it doesn't translate. I can't get a fraction of people for my Instagram on Twitch. They don't give a fuck. They're just like it's really tough. Dude. It's gnarly. It's super gnarly. It's um, really fucking tough. And but then it also makes me like I I post plenty of video game stuff on my Instagram. Why are you guys there? <laughs> like, <laughs> but like ultimately, you like they're there to see the snippets of era that make it mm. onto my Insta. Like I get it. It's just so funny. Mm. Like you and I'm sure you suffer from this. Like you want your YouTube fan base to enjoy specific things you put out but then they crave other yeah. stuff and like it's yeah and i've i learned a long time ago that you can't give them what you want to give them you got to give them what they want and you want as a person as well if that makes you sense. guys have kind to have like, a happy medium i guess yeah you just have to you know i can't be like i just want to show you gaming content now and i just can't expect them to all come because they're not going to but you know, if I do like the happy medium, that's what I did is like, let's, let's ease them in with heavy bangers. I do that on my reactions. It's not really different. You see me do it live. Right. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. And that's also me learning. Like I had to learn how to be a Twitch streamer. Kind of like I know Twitch for so long because I grew up a gamer. I, I know the platform very well, but in terms of doing it, it was like new, new game for me. Yeah, It's wild. So yeah, I started with that and it was just so it was pretty seamless. I was like, oh yeah, this is just a reaction video all the time. <laughs> you know? <laughs> 24 so, hours, live. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So all I would do is before my reactions start, hey guys, I just started Twitch. I'm going to stream right after this video is uploaded. Follow me. And that's been the best conversion always because it's right after they watch the video. I'm live. I plan that shit to a T to make sure it converts as well. And that's do a lot of people watch your YouTube video like the second it's live. Yeah. A, a, a good chunk. The majority. I was like, wait, how does that work? First two hours is the biggest usually. Like, so I don't know I if guess. I'm going to be streaming when that person watches my YouTube video in three weeks. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's the obvious. <clears throat> okay. And the worst case scenario is they just follow you then and they'll catch you next time. So I don't really mind. Right. Okay. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Um, and that also keeps them a little bit more excited to want to instantly find when I'm uploading a video because they know that's also tied to my Twitch or something right. like that. It's like, it's all linked. So I like doing that. And that's been my easiest conversion. And it's still hard. Like I, I've been doing that for all of my reaction videos specifically for the past like four or five months, okay. every single one I do. And I, like, I think I have like 15K followers on here or something, which is still a fuck ton, but it's like compared obviously to YouTube, like <laughs> there's a large chunk of conversion uh, that still yeah. needs to be happening. Plus the content is the same. It's, I'm reacting right. essentially the most of the time. Now I've been branching off. Of course, right. I, I was stoked to see you playing video games today. I love it. Yeah, dude, the horror games are, is, is fun because I think it still ties under the reaction thing. And that's something I always want to make sure is like, oh, yeah. Creator. Wow. I didn't think about that. Yeah, because I'm gonna be honest with my guys. Like, I'm a gamer, but like, I'm no MLG. So I know you're not gonna watch me for the gameplay. You're gonna watch me for some sort of fun entertainment and me interacting. And I wanna do that too, right? Like, I tried playing WoW, and it's like I play that much more competitively, like Arena and shit like that. Didn't go as well. I was too focused. That's it's as simple as that. I'm too focused on what I'm trying to do. I can't interact as much with people. And I really didn't like that because I come on Twitch to interact. Yeah, I, I need to be better about that because I, I, that's me. When I'm in league, I'm like, like I'm sucked into it. 
You're, yeah. So, but then I've also made like great connections recently. Like I'm friends with like a huge league Twitch streamer, but it's just like, what's that actually going to get me to? Like, it's like, <laughs> I know, I know that's, I'm, a, I'm friends with a good chunk of the wow streamers. Uh, yeah. Do you I, know Hansel like, gaming? Yeah. yeah dude, I've known him. He's a, a big time. era fan. He's always been one of, the, yeah, and it's yeah. funny, like it's like you said, metal and video games. There's so many gaming dudes that I've known from mm-hmm. being in my band too, because they all listen to mm-hmm. the band. I love it. Exactly. It's so sick. Dude, he he always has the arrow poster in the background. Yes, dude. dude. Like, hey, he's always yeah. in the arrow mosh pit at the shows too. The guy's wild, bro. Yeah. yeah, he's great. And just me, some of those guys were were great. And it's not like it's I don't indirectly, I don't know, fully benefited. It doesn't really matter, you know, me as a musician either. It's not like sometimes I'm sure he actually plays some of my stuff too. Cause I'm like, yeah, dude, go ahead. It's copyright. Right. And he's super chill, but it's not like, you know, every day it's like, Hey, whole gaming community, go to this music channel. And oh yeah. Thing. yeah, yeah. Right. You know what I mean? And I don't expect that same thing. Like I'm not going to be like every day, like, Hey guys, go watch yeah. someone do play loud. <laughs> yeah, 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 you know yeah. what I mean? Um, so the overlap is, it's always fun having it, but yeah, it's always that like, well, it's hard to intertwine in a way. I will say this too. I think the pandemic, caused a lot of people to create twitch accounts that was a struggle because when you think about like youtube like you have this mass audience you're appealing to or me with instagram it's like Mm -hmm. if someone has to make an account on something else that's that really dwindles down your conversion (laughs) but with this like i mean bt bam streamed live show like people are gonna make accounts for that shit all day Mm -hmm. so it's like yeah if you're huge huge it's much easier but yeah when you're when you're smaller i like i know like my conversion fuck it's been tough it's been every time even on instagram and i know whenever i just do a story it's like i get like five followers it's like (laughs) you know what i mean but it's like i'm actively doing it and actively pushing it and purposely making a point of my content relating to my youtube even though it's a different twist on it it's still like if you like my youtube this isn't like a culture shock to you it's still like you get what you kind of come for which is some sort of me hanging out with you and you kind of see that personality well and through. it's like we said it's like for someone who just watches all your youtube videos and a fan of you they can come talk to you face to face basically it's like exactly. that's what tri- twitch really like shines it's mm-hmm. like when you go to a show to, to meet someone in a band to talk to them for three minutes at the merch table at the end of the night you can just do that the whole time i'm on twitch you know what i mean like I was literally talking to them about my chat on that. I was like, because they were like, Nick, why don't you go on tour so you can hang out with us? You know, like, or t- like, I want to meet you and stuff. And I'm like, I have an actual question for Twitch. And I'm like, or for, yeah, Twitch. Channel. I was like, would you rather me spend that time on Twitch where I can literally answer all of your questions for four hours every day? You know what I mean? Or would you rather awkwardly talk to me for 10 seconds at the merch table when I have to do something else, unfortunately? And have that experience dude it's like let me let me tell let me answer that question for all of your viewers <laughs> like you much rather the because on tour it's at the end of the night i'm super gross and sweaty i'm tired mm-hmm. and then like if there's one person behind you waiting to talk to me and i'm talking to you yeah. my focus exactly. is gone exactly. then i'm in that like that paradox of like uh, i wonder what that person should i uh like there's like this whole awkward Mm -hmm. you never get the complete unique like interaction with some it's so weird so weird. i know as as like a consumer of that or of that interaction especially when i was younger and you it's so weird because you kind of expect that when you're younger from like right and remember to like take time i hate that like i hate it so much (laughs) and it's like because like you're a huge fan of them and you're like you finally get to see them it's your one moment there you see them once a year right like they come to your town like once if you're lucky right uh, maybe once a year and it's like you just want that that time and it's like you, you gotta understand that that band member just played a whole fucking set they probably want to go to sleep well and, and it's not even that aspect of it like i could never give that person what they want in that amount of time anyway that's true. exactly like i feel bad for those people because like i do want to get to know you i do want to give you the answers you look for i want to mm. give you all that but we're not going to get that in the two minutes i'm talking to you with a bunch of custodians kicking around beer cans and like it's just not gonna get there yeah it sucks exactly. dude i hate it i know and i feel bad for the band dudes and that's why like i've some a lot of times like even if i kind of know a dude on tour I'll, like if i go see a band and i kind of know the other band like i've avoided just saying anything to the other band because i know like they there's people i have their deal they're doing their shit and it's like i don't also want to put that pressure on them in, in that sense 
you know, I'm like, they already have enough to deal with. And it's like, I'm just going to go chill and do my own kind of thing, even though it would be fun to do. But yeah, like so I get both mindsets. I'll tell so you weird. too, like touring life is so weird too. Cause you see so much of the world, but you don't, it's all from the inside of a venue. <laughs> right. That's where you spend your whole day. Like you don't mm -hmm. like, there's so many places in so many cities I wish I could see, but I'm like, I have sound check and then I have meet and greet. And then I, like, it's like, it's so weird. It's so strange. It's such, it is a world. It is a lifestyle that I am still getting used to. Mm -hmm. Granted after like seven, eight years right, doing it. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah. And even just being in that sense of like, after you finish your set, you're not automatically, I'm assuming in the mode of like, okay, now this is like my fans time of full conversion for like the next two hours. Whereas like on Twitch, like when you're streaming and you make the conscious decision of for the next three hours, this is dedicated to communicating with people. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. that you're in that different mindset. And it's so, Super true. I feel so sad for some people that like meet their favorite band members and they're like, I had a shitty experience. And it's like, but, but like, was it, or was the guy just like, maybe it was well, the best even, time. Like, yeah. Even still, even if it was a yeah. shitty experience, like you got to give that one dude the benefit of the doubt. Like, yeah, you don't know what exactly. he was going through. Like I've gone through, fucking horrible shit on tour that i didn't want to talk to people but i did because I'm supposed to and then like i probably yeah, came yeah. off as an asshole yeah it's so hard to be like your your true genuine self and show all of it within that time period dude i know and yeah that struggle it's always been interesting to me like that musician's perspective of the struggle because i know the consumer perspective yeah. of that so well i love i love this i love having you on because you, you're a different like pace that. but um had so far like i've had a lot of like my touring homies uh, i'm trying to branch so out and have meme. like more people i don't know <laughs> yeah more meme. <laughs> god damn it okay um i don't want to keep you this has been a long one i have a couple more things that we can just yeah. stride through Go ahead, man. um do you cook in your house i kind of yeah i actually live with my girlfriend and she's super nice i'm always like 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 let me cook dinner and she's just she likes cooking like hey I'm not going to hate on that shit. You want to fucking cook? Like, thank you. I super love <laughs> no, that. Hey, yeah. appreciate that. You know what I mean? But every time I'm like, are you sure? Oh, <laughs> cause I'm not expecting that. Do you, you like, know, do like, you like to cook? Like, is it something you enjoy? Kind of, Yeah. Like, I mean, I got to live and that's kind of the point. It's not like, Oh, this passion of cooking. It's more like a, I gotta, I gotta live kind of thing. So right. Like yeah. Like, I can go back to like recording this video or some shit. <laughs> yep. Um, I find myself, I, I like it and I'm passionate about it, but even like days like where I have to work a shift at the shop, come home, mm. do something guitar related and then do a Twitch stream. It's like, I'm probably eating a peanut butter honey sandwich. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, dude. Or just fucking ordering in some shit or just going to, uh, yeah. DoorDash is my mortal enemy. They take so much money from me. Dude. dude. I just go to my fucking local grocery store and just get fucking, um, dried meats. I'm, I'm slow, my background slob, so I just get salted dried meats and I just eat that shit just on its Damn. own with some bread. And I'm good, dude. Like, I'm Gucci for the rest of the night. I just got some meat. <laughs> I'm, I'm cool with that sometimes. But yeah, it's, it's tough. It's like food almost becomes like an obligation of like, shit, I have to do this instead of like this like nice, enjoyable experience that a lot of people get to have with food. It's like, I just need to finish my fucking work today. I don't have time. <laughs> yeah. Really. Yeah. I get that a lot. Yeah. Uh, do you believe in aliens? I don't not believe in. I get well. Believing else, in aliens is a weird way to word it. I guess. Do you think I aliens exist? It's impossible that nothing else exists in the universe. That's that's the answer I, I get the most. Yeah, I'm not like here's some weird squiggly looking motherfuckers that are gonna come and zap us and stuff. It's more just like I think it's literally impossible that nothing else out there exists. That's like life form of some fashion you don't think they've That's ever made contact or anything unless it's through like rings of saturn music or some shit <laughs> I don't know, like, back to the meme that band yeah, man it's so wild dude those noises they can make man i the alien noises is a popular thing in modern metal it's, it is it's but it, I, like <sighs> <laughs> i want my guitars to sound like a guitar that's the best way i'm gonna word that i guess that's that's a good dude the pitch shifters now and everyone knowing like what a chromatic harmony shit is and just creating all of the alien noises it's like it's hard not to include that in a bunch of breakdowns with zeros 
Like it's it's <laughs> yeah. It's just you're so I tempted. I mean, like we're abusing the harmonic thing right now, and yeah. <laughs> harmonic. What are some of your like favorite guitar tricks that you just abuse the shit out of? Um, you just have to have them in all your songs, no matter what. Definitely like natural harmonics. Like not okay. Like if you've ever played irreversible that we we abuse like we really do abuse the shit out of I, it. yeah no. did it, did it, did yeah did it, so yeah. those like they work for most of the keys you write your songs in because they're natural yeah. harmonics they're your open right. so like it's prog glasses right there we're yeah. in any key we want to be because it's a harmonic there guys. you go <laughs> yeah right. that works there yeah we, we abuse natural harmonics like and i mean snowblood's breakdown is literally just a sped up irreversible like it's <laughs> I know it's yeah it's awesome. That's the thing is like I, I've always there's always like those tropes of like oh yeah you you do the the pitch drop to like go really low in this part in a breakdown or you use like the alien noises and it's like you kind of don't want to use them because it's like everyone uses them but then it's like when you try to use it you're it's like, like that's sick. <laughs> yeah. You're like shit, I gotta put that in. Yeah, there. there's that. I see. I okay. I have like a huge respect for like true Floyd or like whammy players. Oh yeah, yeah. Cause like that takes that alien noise to like, like an analog level. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. trying to get more into that, but they suck to set up and tune. And... Dude, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, my Ernie balls come with that shit, and I'm like, guys, you're. It's very fancy, very fancy. I put two quarters and blocked the bridge though, so it's okay. But a nice fancy whammy bar option. I blocked that shit instantly. Just not worth it. I tune too much to different tunings. I'm not going to reset my guitar. Yeah. Everything. So we, we pitch shift our whole guitar. Okay. That's the new thing. Yeah, I know. Live. Yeah. Even. That's sick. Yeah. Cause I mean, isn't it, well, I guess cause everything's so loud. You can't really hear. I know that drives me crazy. No, like, uh, we did some methods that like, that I had to switch away from because it like, especially when it's in my in ears, I'm getting a full unadulterated like sound of my guitar in my ears. And some of them were like, I was playing shittier because I hated the way it sounded. Mm -hmm. Uh, But the Digitech drop pedal is pretty seamless. Shit. Okay. I got Um, one of those. And then. Yeah. Live when you're playing, like the obviously the drums are staying the same, so like that's mm. such a loud part of the mix and the vocals. So like live, it it's so hard to tell. Okay, yeah, that's good because yeah, that's the one thing I always done when I tried the pitch shifting thing. Literally, instead of tuning, and obviously because everything's a lot quieter, it's like I know this is not the note I'm playing right yeah. now, and it just fucking drives me crazy. Well, and like if you're not loud enough, you're gonna hear. That's yeah. the word. Because I, I, I do play like a lot of my, um, like I practice a lot of my songs in my room and then I don't want to like mm-hmm. blast era to my neighbor. You know what I mean? So I'll play it at a, like a decent volume. You might be fans, dude. <sighs> I doubt Easy. it. Um, so then you're, you're hearing like the, the, the true one step tone difference between my like actual guitar and the amp. That's, oh, that's fucking terrible. That hurts, that's all. dude. Yeah. It hurts. Um, well, does anyone have any questions for Nick or is there anything you want to cover on the podcast? Um, no, dude. I mean, I, I'm whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I, we, we going over a lot. Yeah. That's pretty much my whole life. Memes growing up as a gamer and, um, embarrassing myself on the internet, like, and pretending to play guitar at the same time. So bands would think I have talent, but it's not there. And that's pretty much the entire jig. I love it, dude. I, 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 to touch back on like the whole pandemic bringing musicians to these platforms, mm-hmm. like I live for it because A, I know, like I do follow YouTube and like YouTube culture, I guess, and stuff like that. Right. Mainly because when I'm on tour, there's not much else to do besides watch YouTube on my phone. And right. Listen. Watch this guy say, why the fuck didn't they do this song like <laughs> Augment again, dude? Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> JT's in the chat. He'll love that one too. Hey, JT, how you doing, man? Um, <laughs> someone had two questions for you. Do you have a dog? Oh, no, you do have a dog, don't you? I don't. I, I, I would love to have a dog. I just need to understand how to take care of myself as a human first before I try another live in my responsibility. Um, so I'm trying to be responsible with that. So not yet, but one day I would definitely love to have one. Totally get that. 
Sorry, Keith, what was your other question? I can't scroll my chat up for some reason. Uh, do you have any non-metal or heavy artists that you look up to or are inspired by? Oh, shit. Define, like, how, like, metal, like, is, you know, like, is Alexis on, is, like, alt-rock? Oh, like, no, you had it right there. That's one of my all-time favorite bands, Alexis Alex, on Fire. Yeah, like, Alex yeah like is, are they met? i don't know like you mean like non-screaming or heavy in any i think sense? they do mean that okay because yeah that's a completely different answer so um post malarn's dope he's, okay he's sick i love that he has that metal background i love this his songs especially when like rockstar when i did that i did a cover with andy of rockstar that's like our biggest fucking cover of course it's a cover um or like video of course it's a cover that song to me when i heard it i was like this is a metal song in uh, medium of a non-metal song and i instantly heard that and i love that kind of stuff with okay. like the dark beats and any kind of music that where the drum work actually even if it's like rap or trap or any of that shit the drum work is actually really cool like they actually know what a triplet is or like some kind of groove it's kind of unconventional yeah rap like, producers are insane i'm never going to give yeah. it to the rappers themselves but their producers are <laughs> fucking solid <laughs> yeah so that stuff like band specific again post malone travis scott's pretty cool he has a lot of those dark overtones and he has a lot of uniqueness with some of his beats and i really like that shit um fuck dude other than that i mean like the classic rock stuff i don't really jam it much anymore or like punk stuff like blink i'll always fuck with you know first date or like that yeah. that stuff <laughs> but that's kind of it i'm i'm a very metal induced oh and video game music that's another one that's actually not metal. I love video game music. When you say like video Capital game music, game. do you mean like orchestral numbers or like synth type? Like the 8-bit or okay. Castlevania. Oh, okay. Music. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like Mega Man 8 and like those soundtracks. Like that shit I love. Okay. Um, other than that, I mean, I've just been so enthralled in heavy music in general, whether it have been like rock or alt rock or fucking death metal or deathcore or gent or any of that. That's like... I love the influences from like classical and jazz, but I like them through the medium of heavier music. Yeah, no, I totally get that. I, I completely yeah, like get I that. can't sit there and listen to Beethoven, but if somebody's on their guitar shredding with some double kicks going, <laughs> I will listen the fuck out of that Moonlight Sonata. Uh, you bet you that. <laughs> uh, people are wanting me to ask you about Bug Wars, but isn't Bug Wars like an actual TV show that got ripped to YouTube? I'm not... Bro, what is Bug Wars? Yeah, it... <laughs> <laughs> so Bug Wars oh is a YouTube thing I play when I'm like eating food. Like anytime I'm on my channel, but I like don't actually have the time to like participate you're, in my you're Twitch not stream. Bug, right? No, Bug Wars is a YouTube. This is hilarious. <laughs> it's like it's like I don't even know how to fucking describe it. It's like a discovery show where like they a camera crew gets like maybe like a uh, Katie did fighting a spider in real life. So it's like oh, fuck that. Fuck that. No, dude, I'm not about bugs <laughs> fighting each other. I, I already don't want to know bugs exist. Those fucking alien motherfuckers. OK, I just am not. No, I don't need to see bugs fighting each other. I just hope they all die. And that's it. I know it's going to fuck our ecosystem. Well, okay, so what's so funny about Bug Wars is, like, it shows two bugs fighting, but then mm. they, like, impose, like, Roman army sounds or, like, tiger <laughs> sounds. Like, if you've yeah. never watched a, a, a video, they're amazing. Okay, I got to watch. No, yeah, I've never seen that. That's I what just, I need. I need to be sponsored by Bug Wars for sure because I play enough of dude. their shit on my channel. That's so fucking. F I, okay, I see the humor in it with like that voiceover. I thought it was literally just like, no, hey, you dude, watch no, 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 no. Like, there's like a panel of like scientists that like talk about each bug. It's really. I, that's why I think it's like a cable show that got like ripped. Do they state their stats and shit? Like, yep. Like strength. Then okay, so it's kind of like you want you know animal tier list. Yeah. That guy on YouTube. Okay, it's kind so it's kind of like that for bugs. I'm yeah, but it's like. Right. You just have to check out like a little bit of a video. It. It's okay. really goofy. It's okay. like this guy would be like, "This is the Katie did from Northern Africa," and he's and like <laughs> and like he tells us about this bug, and then we just watch it like fuck up a grasshopper. Oh God, yeah, yeah. I like Nat Geo stuff. The bug stuff, I I not the biggest fan of the bug stuff. I like the animal stuff. You know what? I will bugs. say is I'm not as weirded out by bugs after watching Bug Wars. I don't. 
I, I, I will be. <laughs> but I'll check <laughs> okay, it out. Okay, all right, fair enough. I, I'll check it out. Here, I asked him out. about Pug Wars. You guys happy? Send the spooters to him. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, any other questions? I think that was it. Uh, any other questions for the meme dude over here? This has been fun, man. Oh, uh, and Ooh, I will. Dark. We we will play League of Legends at some point. Oh yeah, do you fuck I, with Dark Souls? Uh, I'll fuck. Honestly, I'm that type of dude where it's I'll like, fuck. if you got a group of dudes that are just doing something fun on the game life, you just hit me up and I'll be like in there till like 3 a.m. probably with you doing dumb shit. Like I'm that kind. Of so you've never whatever. have you ever played the Souls series? Kind of like a bit here and there, but not like properly. Okay, like sat there and yeah, tried yeah. to. You're not get part past. of the the cult. No, not the Dark Souls. The, the, no, dude, but yeah. That game studio has like a fucking cult following. I, me being included, I like I can't help it. Dude, I I know I see it. It's it's insane, and it's I yeah. I've never personally like played it through in any fashion. I played like the first level or two in like some, and I'm like, and then I like played on Steam, and it's like this is export Xbox ported, and I just instantly hit exit because I see like hit X or hit yeah, fucking, yeah, yeah, yeah. hit like what, what the left trigger to do this. And I'm like, guys, I'm on my keyboard. Oh, you I don't can't, I don't need, I, no, I don't think you can play that game with a mouse. Yeah. So I, I quit usually at that point. And also I die instantly and that makes me yeah. rage quit. So that doesn't help. Well, I'm, I'm very skilled at that game, but I'll still die instantly. <laughs> it is a rage but yeah, game, dude. but Hey, I will say if, if you want to have funny reactions on your Twitch channel, trying trying to play they, dark souls that's a that's yeah. a top one top tier they told i i've realized my key to viewership in twitch is people watching me do shit that brings me pain <laughs> yep. in some fashion yeah. whether it be fear whether it be me embarrassing myself and screaming justin bieber baby is that like a sub goal <laughs> any of those things <laughs> They love it. Yeah, and it's you know funny what? that is becoming like I wanted to be like a serious League of Legends Twitch streamer, but people are just coming mm -hmm. to watch me yell at people now, and it's. Just... <laughs> I mean, like I said, I'm not. I'm, if this is what the people want, that's part of me, bro. I'll just be me. I don't care. <laughs> I'm not gonna filter myself. I'll be a dumbass, and it's like I'm so lucky because I've had six years of what I call shame immunity buildup. Yeah, that like, bro, you can call me whatever you want or think how <laughs> dumb I am, like. I'm good, dude. I'm, I'm going like, to keep doing this. I will not stop. Make, yeah. Yeah. You can't make fun of me more than I've already made fun of myself. So go at it. <sighs> Try me, bro. Oh, so good. <laughs> uh, yeah. They made me eat a ghost pepper for a sub. That was one of them. That was not. You did that? You ate a ghost pepper? I made it. I made it legit as fuck. I showed them the packaging. I went on the internet. I said, this is exactly what I have. I gave them the proof. I even made sure, because I'm legit when I do these challenges. I don't want nobody calling me out and saying I faked it. So I had the package. I'm like, this is it. You see it. Went on the internet. This is the exact package. You see the ingredients. I didn't leave it even from the frame. I just took the ghost pepper, still in frame, and I just bit it. Dude, Full time. I fuck with hot shit, but eating a, like a, I guess raw, a raw ghost pepper, that's, how, how was that? I'm going to be honest. I liked the subs. But the stomach pain was not fun for the next two days. <laughs> Dude, no. Was it, was the pain later worse than the pain eating it? See, the pain eating it was more this high of, dude, you just got 50 subs. Okay. So you're going to do whatever chat wants you to do. <laughs> you're running out of adrenaline. I feel that. <laughs> yeah. And then the pain later was kind of like, was that really that much? Was that, where should I have made that so uh, go higher? That, that kind I of thing. I think so. And I think you should have made that one a little higher. Well, I've had that feeling a lot, and I just keep giving it at way too low, and it seems to work. You are it an entertainer. I'll give you that. That's, yeah. It's uh, someone in my lineage was some kind of jester or some shit, I'm <laughs> sure. Like, <laughs> I owe it to them. Like, yeah. All right, dude. It's been awesome. I'll end it here. Um, All right. I'll, I'll hit awesome. you up with that, that league game. Okay, dude. Yeah. It's, it's slide in my DMs. Just make sure we'll you that. have it we'll installed on your computer before I. I have to double check. Warzone took up my whole fucking drive, but okay, I'll check. Yeah, hit me <laughs> yeah, up. to play with the casuals, as yeah, yeah, filthy casuals. casuals. But yeah, dude, it was a pleasure talking, man. Yeah, it was I had awesome. a lot of fun, especially talking to someone who's an actual musician, <laughs> and not another memer on the internet. Yeah. So, dude, yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. thank you, chat, for listening to our weirdness. <laughs> and I do put these up on YouTube, so that'll be more your world. Oh, and, yeah, it will be okay. immortalized. And okay, awesome. Fun oh, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> All right, dude. I'll catch you later.
Sweet. Have a good one.